think of what happened from there, and then I guess you do like the way the team was able to pull it out. Yeah, I think it was, you know, one of those typical games where you start well and lose focus. Um, and then when you lose focus, you lose intensity and purpose, and that's what happened. And this team plays really, really hard, and they compete on every facet of the game, and they beat us in the effort categories, so the transition and the offensive rebounds. I think they have 40 points between those two. That's almost half of their points total, and, you know, that's not really um, it's, you know, acceptable for us. We, I mean, we're not, we let ourselves down there, but, you know, we did rally to, to win the game. Jalen you know, hit a number of big shots late. Yeah. Was going with him just kind of an example of going with the best guys to give you the best chance to win on that night? Yeah, I thought, you know, go with the guys that were going to, um, that were playing well right there. We're getting the job done. You know, um, you know, we got caught in some uh, long rotations in that second quarter, which put put us up, put us up against some, um, you know, some, some minutes. Uh, and so we had a bunch of minutes to spare with some other guys, guys that finished the game, so. You all right off 30, is that where you wanted him? Yeah, I mean, we don't want to push him out at much much more than that. So if we were willing to able to try to win the game with, by not going, you know, going past that, that's that was certainly an objective too. Feel that Patrick was able to kind of re-inspire that, that fire there in yeah. the fourth quarter for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I thought everybody in that, you know, final unit was, was uh, real key. I thought Vando was good, you know, like always, you know, and um, – Whenever we take him off the floor, we lose a little bit. And uh, Ant was good. You know, made some time shots. Was super aggressive. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just about finding the right five guys that actually have it. Jalen, as we were talking about, close close the game there. He had that when Kat got doubled, picked it out to him that one time, went to the basket. Yeah. I mean, is, is that what he can kind of bring around Cat? It's not only the skip pass spot up shot, but also the ability to really attack that close up. Yeah, and uh, you know, the ability to get to the paint and elevate and finish it with tough angle shots. Um, you know, it's kind of unique in our in our team, um, and you know, his he can create for himself. And um, so, yeah, you know, I mean, he had a bunch of stuff in and around the paint tonight, draw fouls, and that kind of stuff. Like that's it's huge when you're trying to fight off a comeback or, or whatever, just to get two to the free throw line, let the game come down. You talked to Malik on the court after he missed his first four of the night. What, what do you say to a guy right now who just like isn't seeing them fall at the rate that he's yeah. used to seeing them? Yeah, actually, I, I told him then um, had nothing to do with the shooting. I basically just wanted to let him know that you know because of certain like you know certain uh, rotation minutes uh, criteria, like I had to kind of get him out so I could get him back in so he could you know get other guys in their slots. So that, that's what that was about. Has the game evolved to the point where in the fourth quarter or really in crunch time, uh, the guy with the ball in his hands needs to be a, a shot creator, at least a playmaker for himself instead of just a guy who's a, like a pass first point guard? And is that one of the reasons why when you have Ant and Jalen on the floor at the same time, you have two guys that can kind of do that pretty easily? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the game's evolved to that. I think it's always been that. You know, you know, the, do you have a closer? Um, I mean, some, more than one closer. Yeah, well, if you have more than one closer, then it's you know, your luxury. But, yeah, guys that can create offense for themselves. I mean, you know, D'Lo's been so good at that, and that's why his clutch numbers are so good. Um, you know, Cat gives us that ability, and now growing into that a little bit more. So, uh, for sure, I mean, defense definitely stiffens up at the end of the game. We face way more switching. That makes it an ISO game. Now it's about you and your ability to break that guy down. I think it'd been what 21 days since you were able to pencil in this particular starting lineup. Yeah. Um, for you know, as one guy after another came and went. Yeah. It's only the 11th time I think this whole year this five has been able to start together. I mean, yeah. we, did you think they kind of picked up in some sense where they left off at um, least at the start? Yeah, I mean, it looks like they raced off the two big big leads. You know, um, big lead to start the game and a big lead to I think grow grow it out and probably ran out of gas a little bit. You know, I think it was a combination of obviously the new guys. Join it back in, and and then just you know a little little bit of uh, and the jet lag from the, from the road trip, and you come back from the West Coast, and you're just just everything's feel a little tired. So you talked about consistency after that Clippers, not the Lakers game. Uh, is that a primary objective moving forward here to establish more of that, like this whole season? Even if 
the effort's been there pretty consistently. Yeah. The results have just been uh, establishing that. So pretty high up on the list. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, we always want to try to have consistency in our performance, our ability to finish, shoot, execute. Um, but I've said it many times, like, young is just a synonym for inconsistent. You know, right. like when you're a young team, you're going to be inconsistent at times. So as long as the effort's there, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll keep trying to build our consistency and hopefully we'll be two out of three nights. And as we move down, it's three out of four nights. And then, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll be that consistent team, but efforts have got to be there first. Chris, I know that the transition numbers have been better with, you know, obviously Kat and, and D'Angelo in the lineup, but how would you evaluate the way that the team has, you know, has, has tried to push the pace off of live rebounds or, you know, converting steals into points on the other end? Yeah, I think um, it's, you know, it, you talk about tonight or just in general? Just, I mean, just in general. Yeah, games. I think, you know, I, I think there's like growth there for us. I think we can be a little bit quicker down the floor sometimes. And then when we do get down the floor, like I think there's a little too much holding. You know, we do have, when we have a, an advantage, like a clear advantage, like the defense is not clearly set. We can get to the paint a little bit early. Uh, um, we did a lot of surveying kind of today at the end of our push and instead of just kind of moving and playing with some free flow. Uh, and that's just guys getting used to each other again, wanting to feel the ball, you know. I, I noticed D'Lo from the bike yelling at the guys on the court. And then I think Beverly was yelling at the guys on the bench when he was on the court. Is it important to have multiple voices to drive engagement? Yeah. I mean, you know, Patrick has been a great leader for us all, all season. Um, you know, he sets the tone and he, he was, you know, he was uh, letting his teammates know that, you know, what, what we did tonight probably wasn't good enough, you know. Um, and then, you know, when guys are taking ownership over that and talking about it, that's when you know you can move forward with something and actually get better at it. We'll go last question on the Zoom to John. John, go ahead. Hey, Chris, just two quick ones. First, uh, with Cat and D'Lo, did you get the sense that there was just – some reacclimation that they were working through, whether it was turnovers or, or just the shooting and, and some things that just trying to find that flow again after the time away. Yeah, I think it was a, a whole bucket of stuff, John. I think um, it was, it was fitness. It was feel, it was like just rhythm and form and all that kind of stuff was off. And we, we expected it to be the case. And then is, uh, you know, is one of the silver linings of, the last couple of weeks here that, you know, hey, Jalen has maybe built up a little more confidence in himself. Jaden is doing a little bit more offensively. I mean, just maybe some of the things that you're able to unearth and then even put into practice and, and fold that in now that you have a full complement here. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought um, I thought Jaden was great playing off the catch from the left corner, made a couple of nice plays when we needed it most, found Vando for a dunk. I think he made a layup for himself. Uh, you know, we talked about Jalen's ability. These guys, you know, again, they, they've actually talked about consistency. They've been playing consistency, consistent, you know, through their performances. And Jaden hasn't necessarily seen the ball go in from three at that rate, but his his his, uh, his overall game, I thought, has, has been pretty consistent on both ends of the floor. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, guys. Yes.